Hello and welcome to this week's roundup by blockchaingamer.biz. Make sure you check out our website, blockchaingamer.biz. Follow us on Twitter at BCGBiz and connect with us on LinkedIn. Today is Friday, the 28th of July, and I am your host, Jenna Jordan. And with me today is co host John Jordan. Hello, John. How are you doing? Hello. How are you? Yes. Yes. Good. End back. of July. Back after a week of. <laughs> Not a week of holiday, but we were on holiday last week. So therefore we didn't get a video recording or a no. proper roundup, but we are back this week. So good. Um, so this week we have had uh, some fairly big news from Star Atlas developer, ATMTA, a US uh, based developer um, who has raised a significant amount in the past, 200 million, I think, and uh, they announced that they're cutting down 73% um, of their staff, and they're also downsizing their vision, so letting go of certain aspects of the game and focusing more on other uh, aspects. Can you go into a bit more detail there, John, and tell us what's been going on? Yeah, I mean, it's it's sort of um, Star Atlas, I guess, has um, you know been seen as one of the sort of most high profile sort of blockchain games. It's a um, you know a space sort of trading combat game. So uh, sort of um, you know lots of very sort of high end spaceships zooming around space and blowing each other up, and, and sort of uh, clearly inspired by games like sort of Eve Online. Which are very popular um, for a certain type of audience, and also it was a sort of one of the first sort of big projects on the Solana blockchain. So it's sort of it's sort of um, it's it's announcement and and it's sort of early early days were very much in the in the sort of the bull market, and particularly as as Solana was probably the um, sort of fastest growing sort of blockchain in, in during that time. It, 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 it got a lot of um, profile, and as you say, I'm not quite sure the 200 million. I think you know, I don't know. They, they've never formally announced exactly um, <laughs> uh, how much they've raised, um, but certainly they they've sold a lot of the uh, NFT uh, spaceships, and they have sort of two tokens live, and and um, they did do sort of funding rounds, um, and, and and so it was one of these sort of uh, I, I think uh, for a period of time it was sort of like you know. Blockchain games are going to take over the world, sort of thing, and, and Star Atlas is is, is 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 sort of in the in the forefront of that. Um, I think for those of us who who know about making games, I was always like a little bit nervous about them because they they got very big. I mean, at their peak, they were over two hundred and fifty staff, um, mm. and they'd never made a yeah you know, they weren't an existing company and they'd never made a game before. Um, so you know, if you're trying to make a very very ambitious sort of um, space combat game, you know. Having a lot of people doesn't really help you. Having a lot of people actually hinders you because you know people could always find work to do. So, so you sort of you know it's very expensive clearly to to have a, a very big headcount like that, and it's not very clear that you're going to get the game out that you wanted. So I think even despite you know what what all the sort of problems they've encountered through through there and the changing crypto sentiment and stuff, um, they, it was going to be pretty difficult for them. Um, and famously, there's this other game called Star Citizen, which has raised um, half a billion dollars, so five hundred million dollars, um, and that's, I mean, sort of broadly similar. And that's from a sort of well-known sort of team who've been making games for twenty years, and, and that game has sort of been in development for for a number of years and still isn't sort of anywhere close to being finished. So, so they sort of bit off a lot um, in terms of the, the vision, and then clearly they got hit by various things. So Solana, um, as it had been one of the sort of top performing. Um, sort of crypto assets uh, at one point this then um, became one of the worst performing assets um, partly because FTX went bust and FTX had been pushing Solana in particular and um, the developer Star Atlas as a developer were, were so they got some money from FTX and that meant they had 15 million dollars in FTX when it went bust in November last year um, I think they got some of that out, um, but they also said they had like a tax bill of $30 million. Uh, I, I don't quite know how they managed to do that. Um, and also when they sold their NFTs, they they were selling them in their own token and their own token has gone down like 99% or something. Um, so in sort of every every aspect of the sort of financial management of the company, it's, it's, it's been a you know, disaster. Some of it their fault, some of it not their fault. So um the fact they've gone down from sort of 250 people to 45 now is 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 clearly sensible. I guess probably 
uh, with the, the benefit of hindsight, you would say they should have sort of made that decision sort of earlier, I suppose. Um, they went down from 100, 250 to 170 people, and then they've gone down to 45 now. So they reckon they've got enough money to keep going for a year. I think it's kind of a, it, 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 it's sort of this, uh, um, it's almost like a desirable thing, isn't it? That they kind of keep on building, even in harsh time, good studios keep on building sort of thing. Um, mm. Can that be contra productive do you think to some studios yeah. that they don't actually um want to cut back and want to do take make those hard yeah. uh, sort of strategic things they would have to do because they don't want to be seen as yeah failing or do you know what oh I mean? yeah i mean that's 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 not anything to do with blockchain gaming i mean I, I think particularly in this case yeah they're not an experienced team so they've not gone through that before but i think you know you know anyone who's worked in big tech companies or game development i mean game development in particular um, you know, it's yeah, it can be pretty pretty harsh. Um, mm. And making making hard decisions early um, is is the hardest thing to do, but it's clearly the best thing to do. So if you know at this point, sort of like when FTX went bust, they basically should have made this decision now, and they would have um, you know solved that they would have had like you know probably two years of runway, and they would have you know. S- s- I don't think it would, the situation would be any worse for them. Obviously, they would, would have sort of sacked people early, but they had to sack them anyway. So, um, was, you know, uh, it's better to make the decisions quickly. But it's very, you know, clearly, you know, if you're the CEO of a company, um, you know, really, really hard to, to, to you know, and to go you from... you think uh, this is sort of a sign of, of more things to come, or...? Um, no, I mean, I mean, at this stage, basically what they've done is they've... Reading between the lines, I and mean, they sort of said that actually they've, they say their vision is sort of um, going to be maintained. But basically... The, the big 3D um, Unreal Engine space game is basically on hold. I mean, you can't make those games with 45 people. So what they're doing is they're making a there's a, um, a browser based game called Sage, which is just like a 2D browser game. You know, nothing like the original Rift Vision, but you can use the NFTs in the you know in that game. And then they have they um, they have this thing called uh, I think it's called Crew Crew App. I think it's called. It's a mo- like a mobile move to earn game which is quite an sort of odd, odd sort of thing to do but obviously those are much smaller projects and that's giving utility to the crew nft so if you have a crew nft you can you know earn things by moving um you know a bit like Stefan or those sort of games so um so with 45 people you could probably do those sort of projects fairly easily i mean those projects are not big expensive exciting we're all gonna be billionaire sort of projects like star atlas was um so you know you could argue is you know will they ever get back to building this this big thing obviously that you know they're saying at the moment they will and they hope cutting back down now gives them a year to sort of build out these smaller projects and and, and keep sort of the community interested and also um yeah i think every blockchain game sort of company at the moment sort of hopes in the next year or so that sort of the sort of macro and the crypto situations get better and vcs sort of come back to, to, into the market and they can sort of redo their funding rounds as well and, and mm. you know to be fair to them they you know they did say that they got quite close so another solana based game is aurori which has been in the news this week because they announced well they announced previously that they were going to go cross chain they just mm. didn't announce which chain and now we know that it is arbitrum so both you and me were wrong in our predictions. I think you said Suey <laughs> and I said Oasis, but here we are. So Arbitrum, it's, uh, it keeps on gaining momentum, isn't it? As this uh, sort of gaming blockchain, we discussed that in previous weeks. Yeah. Um, so do you have any comments on that? <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, it, it, is, it is interesting. Um, uh, yeah, Arbitrum is definitely, I would say, for this sort of sort of quarter is 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 the place where a lot of stuff's going. Um and that's a sort of a, you know some games moving. So we had Mighty Action Heroes moving from Polygon to Arbitrum. Um, obviously, we've had Treasure on there for a while, and and just c- kind of L two L two sort of scaling blockchains are obviously going to be where people are going to be looking to to move from other blockchains. So I think it's sort of interesting from from a Solana point of view. Again, sort of uh, a Rory raised about hundred million dollars from NFTs back in the day. Um, it's not as such an ambitious game as Star Atlas, and a bit more of an experienced mm. team. So, um, and, and they sort they friendly. say again, yeah. and and they they sort of have this no, technology. Out. Sorry, your sound keeps on disappearing. Yeah, sorry. Um, uh, so this thing they have this thing called Skype Space, where basically it's sort of like you move your NFTs there, and then you can move them onto any blockchain. So it's it's um 
uh, they're actually sort of becoming a bit of a less of a blockchain game, maybe because they have these assets, but they'll sit on us almost like a centralized, not quite a central server, but a bit like that. And they can move them to any blockchain. So, um, yeah, they've they got a test coming up. So maybe we'll have a, have a have a play and see, see how well it works. Yeah. yeah. And in other news, we have mm. this uh, NFT collection, CyberKongs, which announced that they are going to uh, launch on Ronin, their Genkai NFTs on mm. Ronin. And they're also making a game with Sky Mavis. Did I get that yeah. right? Yeah, that's right. Um, yeah. So you write that up. Have you got anything? Yeah. So, the, so they actually did the mint yesterday. Um, and uh, the the sold out on Ronin, so they had three thousand um, NFTs. So they sold out at zero point two five ETH. So they've made one point four million dollars, um, and that sold out in about an hour, I think. I'm not sure how they, they're also selling on Ethereum. I'm not quite sure how, how that how that one's gone. But yeah, it seems seems pretty um, to be successful. That's and I think it's in today's yeah. NFT climate. <laughs> yeah, I think so. Yeah, and I think also you know it's it's, it's another step for Ronin becoming this place where. Uh, you know, nothing. The games that have nothing to do with Axie Infinity are are going to be sort of um, are going to be released. So, n- yeah, nothing's released yet, still, <laughs> um, apart from Axie stuff. So, so it's still a bit of a work in progress. But it's it's just a more momentum to ro- to Ronin being a blockchain, you know, like mm-hmm. Arbitrum or or Solana or, or Oasis or something like that. So, yeah, and then one of our fav- my favorite games, <laughs> the uh, Kart Racing uh, Rumble Racing Star by D Labs. Uh, they've announced. Well, the Studio D Labs announced a seed fund r- funding round of four point seven million. Um, they're also working on uh, two other titles, uh, Metabolts and Space Frontier. And you did an interview, didn't you, this week with yeah. the head of Web Three yes, Strategies? Right. I think yeah. <laughs> it's called Quinn Quinn Quan. Yeah. Um, yeah. Did you make of that? And yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't think there was anything sort of. Um... Uh, tremendously significant that we didn't know from the podcast. It was interesting to, you know, I, I think they're they're interesting in the sense that they're, you know, they're they're an experienced Korean team and they're very much making sort of web t- games that work for Web two people and Web three people. So they're not sort of heavy duty sort of blockchain crypto um, games, um, and they're all very different. So so as you say, there's a sort of kart racing game, um, Rumble uh, Rumble Star Racing, and then a um, sort of like a like a loot a loot shooter um space front yeah yeah um and then also the one i guess i'm more interested in is, is a sort of uh action rpg uh metabolt so so i think they're, they're very different sort of games and and they're um yeah i just kind of think that they've got experienced teams working on different teams working on those games um and so it'd be interesting to see i think you know they'll have stuff out by the end of the year um yeah. so, so you know just kind of think there'll be sort of good quality games so so um, yeah cool and lastly we got the game of the week metal core which you have been uh, testing so what did you make of that yeah so um so they have this weekend actually they have a um a sort of a a, a, a common exactly they're starting called, but... the play test today aren't they it's a play test yeah, it's yes a play test. so they've had a few of those already so you know um Metal Core is a uh, shooter game, um, and it's a, sort of like a has p- mainly, I suppose, p- sort of PvP sort of type shooter game, Unreal Engine, um, running on Immutable, and um, it, it's all. I guess it's sort of interesting. It's one of these games where you can run around as a sort of as an individual, you know, as a, as a sort of soldier. But then they have these um, vehicles you can have, and you can have um, uh, these big mecha sort of sort of warriors coming in, and you have sort of um, flying sort of, I mean, sort of space. It's not quite spaceships because you're on a you're not flying into space, but sort of air, aircraft, I suppose. Um, so it's all quite these sort of big battles and stuff. So there's sort of quite a lot of testing they have to do. Um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's they also have like a single player sort of. It's more like a a sort of a tutorial mode as well so that's what we we're looking at so so yeah i mean it's it, again they're an experienced team done a lot of stuff in the past um i guess my first sort of impressions you get looking at the videos yeah yeah I think, yeah and, um and and so i think again they're sort of still working out their blockchain side of stuff um so there's a various sort of sort of uh uh currencies and stuff that you can sort of move around again they're, they're probably more they're quite keen on getting just normal gamers, Web2 gamers, and then sort of introducing the blockchain um, a bit more, um, uh, you know, as people get into the game rather than sort of banging people over yeah. the head with it. So, so again, I, I, that's an approach a lot of people are taking now. So we'll, we'll sort of see in the next six months, you know, which of those games sort of find traction with just gamers who don't know anything about blockchain. 
cool. And uh, with that, we're going to close for this week. And thank you very much. And we'll see you all next week. Bye-bye. And you might, have a new, you might have a new hat next week as well, might you? I might, very, yeah. Very exciting. <laughs> if anyone has new hats, we'll uh, give us the hats. Send them our way, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> thank you. Bye.